My name is Rachel, and today I'm going to talk about what Raza is, how Raza fits into the history of NLP, and our approach towards building chatbots. First of all, we'll talk about what you can do with Raza. What was it designed to help you build? Uh, really quickly go over a very brief history of NLP, that's natural language processing, if you're unfamiliar. We'll talk about state machines versus neural methods, what they are, how they work, how to use them. Uh, and finally, we'll talk about how to make sure that conversations with your chatbot actually work and improve over time. So Raza is designed to help you build uh, a specific type of conversational system, which is a task-oriented dialogue system. So task-oriented means the user wants to do something specifically. They have a task they want to achieve. And a dialogue system means that they achieve that task by talking to an automated system in a two-way conversation. And this is different from other types of related systems like a chit chat bot, where the goal is just to have an ongoing conversation with the assistant, but not necessarily to actually do anything in particular. So Raza is a framework that makes it easier for you to build custom chatbots using a combination of machine learning approaches and heuristics or rules. So the real core work of building your Raza assistant is providing examples that your assistant learns from. So how do people say things? What are the different ways that people phrase the things that they want to, to say to your assistant? Um, and how do conversations go? What patterns do you want your assistant to be able to handle? So Raza was built to be super customizable, super flexible, super extensible, um, to be able to support a wide variety of projects. And the downside of that is it does take a little bit more time to get started with a Raza assistant. You know, it's a full development environment. It's a full framework. Um, but once you do, you put in the time to get set up, you should be good to go. And this video series, uh, this is the first one, and we'll be taking you through everything you need to know to build a Raza assistant for whatever it is that you need a chatbot for. All right real quick history of uh, natural language processing, which is the field of using computers to interact with text data produced by humans. So way back in the 1950s and 80s, um, there was a real focus on symbolic rule-based systems. So Eliza was one of the earliest chatbots. It was completely rule-based and it was developed at this time. Uh, and then in the 90s and 2000s in there, uh, the field started to shift to more statistical methods, which basically means counting units of language, so usually words. Uh, and then in the 2010s, there was another shift to, instead of just counting these methods um, using statistical models, uh, using deep learning models, so neural networks, in particular things like embeddings, recurrent neural networks, um, LSTMs, which are a type of neural network. And starting in 2017, there was a shift yet again to a new family of neural methods, uh, namely transformers. So if you've heard of GPT-3 or BERT um, or transformers themselves, that's when that really starts to come in. And Raza really combines uh, different aspects of the history of NLP. So you can have rules to govern what your assistants can say next for things like extracting dates and numbers. We recommend using regular expressions, which are rule-based. Uh, but for things like handling what to do next in a new situation your assistant hasn't seen before, or having a more extensible, generalizable way to understand what someone is saying to your assistant, for that sort of thing, we use neural methods. So we're really um, using the most useful methods from, from every period of the history of natural language processing. So there's two main parts to a Raza uh, assistant, or honestly, any task-based dialogue assistant, uh, dialogue system. So the first is you understand the text. So this task is often called natural language understanding. And this is where you have raw text in, so something that a human has produced. And what you get out is machine readable information. So this may be some sort of um, feature extraction. It may be uh, some sort of representation of what's in the text. Uh, and the two methods that we use to do this are rule-based, so things like regular expressions that find and extract email addresses, which have a very predictable structure. Uh, and the benefits of rule-based um, approaches are that you don't really need much or any data for these approaches. You have to know what the patterns look like and be able to capture that with a rule, but that's pretty much it. Um, and because of this and the fact that they are, they are rule-based, they tend to be pretty fast, they tend to be pretty lightweight, but they can't handle things they haven't seen before, right? So if we started writing email addresses with an ampersand instead of an at sign, a rule that's looking for an, ampersand, an at sign is not gonna be able to find the ampersand email addresses. 
There are also neural approaches. So an example of this would be something like a transformer-based model. So transformers are, are that new architecture. Um, for example, diet, which is one that we've developed uh, here at Raza, that sorts text into intents or sorts of things that your users might say based on examples it's been provided. So it's seen examples. It has uh, extracted a way to make decisions based on those examples. And it can use that decision making uh, for new examples examples that it hasn't seen before. So the downside here is that you do need to have training examples and in general, the more the better, but it's a more flexible system than a rule-based system. So this system might be able to handle the, the ampersand type of email addresses if it's seen a wide variety of different types of email addresses. So a RAS assistant generally uses both. If you are, for example, extracting email addresses, um, it's usually faster and better to do that with a regular expression. Um, if you're trying to figure out all the different ways that someone may ask to order a pizza, generally it's going to be better to do that using a neural method. And then the next thing you have to do once you have all of this information in um, you know, a featureized machine readable state is decide what to do next. Um, and the general task here is called a dialogue policy. So this is what um, your assistant or chatbot will use to decide what to do next, whether that's responding to the user, um, executing some code that you've written elsewhere, or just waiting for a response. And given the response, given your conversation so far, what should your assistant do or say next? So a rule-based way of doing this would be something like a big tree of all possible dialogue options. Um, if you've ever played a video game where you have uh, different things that you can select to say uh, and the conversation proceeds down that path, that's a good example of a dialogue tree. It's the traditional approach and it can work very well in interactions where you don't expect to have a lot of terms and everyone wants to do the same thing but they can't really handle digressions very well. And when you get to the point where people are trying to have longer, more complex conversations with your assistant, a dialogue tree quickly becomes very difficult to uh, maintain and update. So these are also called state machines. Uh, the other option is using a neural approach. So this is based on deep learning, <laughs> based on transformers, for example. Um, so uh, the, the approach that we've developed in-house is called TED, um, and these are all open source. Uh, the tech picks the next best turn based on the conversation so far that it's seen um, from all of the possible options that you have given it to respond. So usually you'll pre-write your responses and it's selecting one. So the downside here is that it requires training examples. Um, and again, in general, the more the better. But a uh, second upside to that is that you can use those training uh, examples as kind of like mini sneaky rules by saying, hey, if you've seen this pattern of conversation before, keep following the pattern that you've seen as training data, right? Use the examples you've seen before. And if those examples don't apply and a rule doesn't apply, then you can use this, uh, this neural method to sort of guess what you think the most likely next best thing to do is. So the big benefit of having this more flexible approach is that it allows users to have more flexible conversations. They don't have to follow a fixed conversational path. They can say other things. And if your assistant has seen data that is, you know, well representative of the type of things that users are actually going to say to it, you'll probably get a pretty good conversation that works. So at Raza, we really recommend using both approaches in tandem for a, a hybrid system for your dialogue policies. You've got your natural language understanding to get from text to features. You've got your dialogue policy to decide what to do next. Um, how do you make sure that your conversations actually work? How do you make sure that your users are getting what they need? Um, and how do you make sure that it's getting better and not worse over time? Well, we recommend that you manually review and annotate them uh, and then correct any errors that you notice your assistant making. Add that corrected data to your training data, retrain your assistant, and redeploy. So doing basically CICD, but for a machine learning model um, that is running your, your chatbot. And as a result, if you're following this process that we call conversation-driven development, you end up with an assistant that is not static, right? It's behaving predictably. Once you've trained it, uh, you can have the same exact conversations, and you can also have conversations um, that you use to test your assistant to make sure it is doing what you think it's going to be doing. Um, but because you can retrain and redeploy very fluently, you can also update your assistant as needed. For example, if people start to ask about something new, you have a quick way to create a way to handle those conversations. 
So this has been a very <laughs> brief, very high level overview of Raza, uh, which is a machine learning slash rule based framework to help you build um, chatbots specifically for task oriented dialogue systems. Uh, we talked very briefly about the history of NLP and sort of situating Raza in that history. Um, we've talked about state machines or rule based systems versus neural networks, both for understanding text and also deciding how to respond. Um, and we've also talked about how to make sure that conversations work and improve over time. So from here, I hope you are excited and ready to start building your first Raza project. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what you build. <laughs>